a second one. <laughs> Subhanallah. But you're allowed to do that once you're married. You're allowed to like decorate yourself for your wife and for your husband, brother. Not just during the courting stage either, right? You bring the flowers to her dad's house and you're all piyari piyari, right? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Hi, sister. Mashallah. Kifa kiale. I've come to meet your dad. He's all like, he's all Muhammad Rafi on the people, right? He's singing nasheeds to her dad and he's all mashallah, mashallah. The mom is, is all, you know, aunties are all flipping out and they're cooking in the house and stuff because the new son-in-law is coming over. Mm-mm-mm. Wow. Divani hai, right? So everything is all crazy, right? Then two months in, he walks in the house and it's like this. Song. <laughs> no flower. The only flower he brings her is the one to make bread with now, right? He don't bring her them other flowers no more. <laughs> and even her, right? When he comes to the house, alaikum. She's all like, wow. She's all mashallah, mashallah. She loves him too much now, right? Because they're going to get married and she has to look her best on the wedding day and she spends a hundred pounds on her hair and then puts a hijab on over it. I never quite understood that, but mashallah, that must be a sister thing. As long as I ain't got to pay for it, it's all good. <laughs> That's actually part of the deal, that the man has to pay for it. So. so, But then once the wedding is done, and the honeymoon is over, he comes home to this same old thing every day. He's, alaikum, and she's, Aysam. and that's it. The perfume. But then when the wedding comes, she gets all dressed up, right? Achi? She don't dress like that for you, but she dress like that for her friends. Or when a conference comes, the brother puts on his perfume, and he puts on his nice soap, and he walks out the house looking fly. But to her, he's just another guy. Doesn't look like that. You don't dress like that for your wife when she cooks for you. Achi. Why not? You dress like that for a restaurant, wouldn't you? You come out looking fly for the restaurant. Some stranger cook for you in a restaurant. You don't even know who that person is. Maybe they spin your food. <laughs> it's possible, right? <laughs> you say something he doesn't like. <laughs> Y'all ain't never going to eat in restaurants again. <laughs> but she worked hard all day for you. <laughs> she works hard all day for you. And you come home and you just, you're just you. Get out of the way of the TV. <laughs> Manchester's playing, don't you know that? <laughs> Clear out. And even her, he, like, sister, he works real hard all day. And he's trying to be good. So he comes home and, like, there's no, hair is not done. It's not a wedding, obviously, the hair is not done. He just, you know, you're supposed to beautify yourself for him as well. I'm not just trying to rip the brothers, although it is a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm, it's not just them. It's you guys too. Don't just dress up for the sister's event or for seeds of change. Because that's your way out. Because for them, they're not blameworthy. It's actually a, a, a source of blessing for you to do that. To look good for your wife, to look good for your husband when you get them. It's a source of ajr for you. You, get, you actually get ajr for that. Can you imagine, sister? You take the perfume like this inside your house and you go, you get ajr for that? He comes home and he's like, mashallah, he's all in love with you again, right? He brings you the real flowers instead of the one you cook with. <laughs> or brother, you, you buy a nice, like, you buy some nice clothes and you just wear it for her. Just surprise her. Show up one day when she made the tandoori chicken and whatnot. Come out dressed like that, looking fly. It's going to go a long way, I'm telling you. I'm giving you pearls, y'all. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. That's, that's from experience. You do that. Muhammad Sallallahu was the rom- most romantic man in the world. Ever. But stuff, Allah. It's not romantic. He's the messenger. <laughs> Bro, he used to look for where Aisha mouth was on the milk glass. And he used to drink from that place. That's game, I'm sorry. I never thought of that. Ever. He used to find the place where her teeth bit the food and he used to bite there. Are you serious? 
You ain't got a game like that, Achie. <laughs> You're not romantic like that. He used to put his head in her lap and read the Quran. And you worried about the football game. But if they go outside that bounds, then they're going to be blameworthy for that. That's not allowed. Because he gave you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you wives and gave you husbands that you might enjoy them like that and get the reward. Just like you get punished for, for going the wrong way, you get blessings for doing it the right way. And they are guardians of their trusts and their promises when they make them. You know, one little, um, one little boy came to me and he was, he was upset. A little teenager, a little kid. And he said, I don't know if I'm wrong, but I hate it when my dad says inshallah. I'm like, wow, really? He said, yeah. I hate it when he said it. I'm like, why do you hate it? What's wrong with you? What's your problem? Why do you hate that? He said, because when he says inshallah, it means he ain't going to do what he said. He never says inshallah to his boss, and he always does what the, what he, what the boss wants. He says inshallah to me, I know it's not going to happen. It's called the inshallah game, right? And we do it to each other. Brother, I need you to come at 9 o'clock in the morning. Inshallah. <laughs> And he know he don't get up until 12, right? <laughs> he know full well he ain't going to be there at 9 o'clock. His boss, he would. I need you to come at 9 o'clock. Okay, okay, sir. Click, and he's there. He's there, 8.30. He ain't saying inshallah to his boss. But he shows up a half hour before. Because we play the inshallah game. Inshallah means leave me alone to us. <laughs> to many of us it means that. Right? Leave me alone. Don't call me again. Because if you say, if you say something to him when he say inshallah, then you, you, are you questioning the qadr of Allah? Bro, everything is inshallah. Your next breath is inshallah. But you try your best to do what you say. Or say you can't do it. Be a man. Be a woman and say, listen, akhi, I don't get up till 12. You, I, I, I'm going to tell you I'm going to be there, but I'm not. I'm, I'm not coming until one. If you can deal with that, then, then that's fine. Otherwise, inshallah, I'll get you someone else. Because I ain't going to be here. I, don't, I, I sleep in and I'm, I'm terrible. I can't tell time. <laughs> I had a brother come. I was on a tour. <laughs> I actually abused him after that, but a long time. I was supposed to catch an 8.30 train. Right? This brother show up at the hotel at 8.25. I'm supposed to make it from the hotel to the platform in five minutes. I'm in the car at 8.30. And he's like, Inshallah, we'll make it. <laughs> I'm like, bro, these English trains don't wait for nobody. These white folks move on time. <laughs> I get there at 8.45, obviously. And guess what? Miracle of miracles! The train's gone. <laughs> And then he goes to me, Well, brother, Allah didn't mean for it to happen. <laughs> and I, I just abused him, absolutely, verbally assaulted him. I said, bro, it's not Allah's fault that you cannot read a watch. Don't blame Allah for your lack of the ability to tell time. You're telling me that you're going to be at a certain place at a certain time. And you, and, and, and you didn't come. Now if you try, that's different. Trying and failing is different. That's a different thing. But sometimes it isn't like that, is it? Inshallah, inshallah. 3 o'clock, brother. <laughs> it's like 3 o'clock comes, 3.30 comes, 4 o'clock. Four. I know brothers who are perpetually late. The only thing they will be on time for is their funeral. And that's because Malakul Maut is in charge of all of that. <laughs> that's the only time they're going to be on time is for their funeral everything else they're late and I don't mean 5 minutes I mean 3 hours mashallah you can guarantee that he's not going to be on time and some people are known for that and it's not a good thing to be known for especially nowadays right? when your alarm clock goes off and you're never late for the non-Muslims if, imagine if we treated our jobs the same way we treat, we, we treat each other Okay, boss. <laughs> I know I start at 9 o'clock, but I'm going to come at 12. And you get to your boss. Hey there. 
Why are you late, Mustafa? Well, sir, Allah didn't make it for me to come on time. <laughs> He's going to tell you to your face. Well, maybe Allah will find you another job. And you're gone, right? That's it. Out. But the biggest covenant, the biggest promise that you've made is whenever you open your mouth and say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Everything else is small compared to that. That is a covenant that you make every day. Every day you say, Shadu la ilaha illallah. In the adhan, right? Shadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Every single day when you say that, you're making a covenant. You are pledging yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is your Lord. He is your Lord and all your worship is directed to Him. Everything that you, every, all your ibadah, all your worship is directed to Him and to Him belong the most beautiful names. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is His last messenger and there is no messenger and no prophet after Him. You're saying that and it's a covenant. And it's a covenant that is extremely heavy. It's heavy in this life because you have to live up to it, isn't it? But it's also heavy in the next life because it can erase every single sin that you have. It can erase them with the permission of Allah. Every single thing that you ever did wrong. Can you imagine that? I want you to envision it to yourself. Because it will happen to you. You'll be in front of Allah. You too, sister. It's not just for the men, it's for you too. You'll be in front of Allah... And maybe you will see your sins. In a big huge scroll that is as far as the horizon. You're seeing it. It's huge. And you're thinking to yourself, this day I'm done. This day I'm over. I'm finished. And then someone will tell you that you will not be wronged on this day. So they'll be put on a scale. All these bad deeds of yours will be put on a scale. And then someone will come and they'll give you a little card. A small scroll. On that scroll it says that covenant that you make every day. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And you'll be on the other side of that scale and it will erase all those bad deeds. Foom, gone, completed, absolutely gone. Yes, it is heavy now. It is, of course it is. But it's going to be heavy then too. That's the covenant. That's the most important covenant and it encompasses everything good. And they protect their salah. It's interesting how Allah mentioned salah twice in these um, collection of verses. The first time He mentioned it, it talks about the feeling in the salah. And now, the second time he mentioned it, it's about protecting that salah. Because sometimes, you know, and I'm not talking about the, the one who sometimes sleeps in. You know, we're not perfect, you guys. No one in here is crystal clear and clean completely. We're all human beings. The best of those who make mistakes are the ones who turn back to Allah. So you're trying to do it. And you're trying your best to protect it. And Allah knows that. And that's why I'm telling you about these things as an encouragement to you and to myself. That these people, they protect their salah. They guard it. The sisters get a little break. But brothers, you don't. You need to be... If you're, if you're above the age of 10, you need to be praying every day. Five times. And be happy it's not 10. Five times, after you don't get no vacation. If you're sick, you pray sitting. If you can't sit, you pray laying down. You pray, akhi. Because the one who doesn't pray, laqad kafaru. Sisters, you too. You may get a break, but if you're not on that break, you need to be praying too. I'm serious. The first thing that you'll be questioned about is your salah. Try your best. Do you know the companions, one time they, they missed Fajr. <gasps> right? Look at me like that. Some of y'all miss Fajr every day. <laughs> Subhanallah. Companions miss Fajr, they slept. Excuse, right? If you sleep, how are you going to make the Salah if you sleep? It's an excuse. Do you know what they thought? 
They thought that because they didn't pray, that Allah was going to send an earthquake for them. That's how serious it was. These are the generation that Allah said, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا And they thought that, because they missed the prayer, they were so concerned with it, that they thought Allah is going to send an earthquake for them. Think of your salah like that. Try. If you can't do it, try. Keep trying. Don't stop trying. Why? Because if all these people did what Allah describes for them to do, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ They are the inheritors. الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسَ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ They are the inheritors. When you inherit something, can nobody take it from you, right? It's your right to have it, inshaAllah. الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسِ They don't inherit Jannah. Jannah is not good enough for these people. Jannah is like down for them a little bit. They don't get Jannah. Or should say, inshaAllah, you, may Allah make you from amongst those people. You, if you're amongst those people, you will not get Jannah. You will get Firdaus. Firdaus is the highest place in paradise. It's not just paradise, right? Paradise is like the slums <laughs> for you, because Firdaus is like where the Pashi people live, all the prophets and that. You look down at Jannah and go, oh my God. <laughs> I'm in Firdaus. <laughs> this is like, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm ball, I'm cribs, forget MTV, cribs, I'm Firdaus. <laughs> yeah. That's where all the prophets live and stuff. You could, you could, you know, you could say salams to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam up there. In fact, right above your head, right, be- right above you is the throne of Allah. Firdaus, brothers, sisters, can you imagine? Of course you can't. <laughs> if you can, you're lying. Because <laughs> Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there's things there that the ear has never heard and the eye has never seen and the heart has never contemplated. So if you're telling me, yeah, I can imagine that, you're lying. You can't. But, inshallah, you will. Simple rules. Very simple. Guard, be, have your khushu'ah in your, in your salah. Keep doing it. Keep trying it. If it doesn't work today, do it tomorrow. If it doesn't work tomorrow, do it the next day. Keep doing it. Trying to have that khushu'ah in your salah. Guard your tongue from crap. Don't let anyone fill your mouth with foolishness. Who cares if someone's short or tall or dark or white? Who cares? Doesn't matter. Guard your tongue away from it. Pay your zakah when you can. And if you can't, ask Allah to give you more so you can. Guard your chastity. Except with your wives and your husbands. You can look fly for them, right? You can look good for them. For them, you're not blameworthy. But if you go beyond that, you will be blameworthy. When you make a promise, keep it. Keep it. Or don't make it. Easy, right? Protect your salah. Pray it on time. And if you do those things... You will be from amongst the inheritors of Al Firdaus. There you will stay forever without any worry. So don't worry about that once you enter that place, inshallah. You can, hopefully, if I get to enter it with you, you can look at me and go, Abu Hafsa, you're right. <laughs> you kept us here until 10 o'clock in the night, even when they told you you were out of time, and it was all worth it, inshallah. May Allah make us from amongst those people. And if you're not from them, you don't think you are, then start today. Because none of us are actually from them. We need to all work on it. No one's perfect. You're not alone. London, Zakmullah Khairan. It's been a blast, you guys. Um, hopefully I'll be back here sooner than later. Check out the fan page, because that's where you can get at me and say how you know long I took and all that good stuff. Anyway, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.